So, we will come to lecture series on advanced linear algebra. We have seen in our last lecture, if V is having direct sum decomposition by its subspaces W1, W2, Wk, then we have seen there exist k linear operators E1, E2, Ek, which are basically projection operators such that the E i square equal to E i and E i into E j equal to 0 operators for when i not equal to j and the identity operator can be written as a sum of operators E 1, E 2, E k and the range of each E i is W i that is subspace W i. And conversely, if we have k linear operators E 1, E 2, E k with satisfying condition 1 to 4, then the vector space V having direct sum decompositions by the subspaces W 1, W 2, W k where W i is the basically range of E i. Now, along this space suppose you want to add the typical characteristics of W 1 and suppose W 1 is invariant under some linear operator T defined on this space B. I mean if the W 1, W 2, W k are invariant subspecies of V under the linear operator T defined on V. And if the space has direct sum decompositions, then also I will have this k linear operators E 1, E 2, E 3 satisfying all these four conditions. But apart from this, we will also have some extra things. Let T be a linear operator on vector space V defined over defined over a field say capital F. And it is given to us say V is equal to direct sum of W 1 W k, where each W i is invariant under T. That is this implies that T of W i is subset of W i. So, then we have already seen in our last lecture that uh, you know one can introduce operators like T 1, T 2, T k as a restriction of T on W 1, W 2, W k. And then if I write here alpha which is equal to having alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha k since V is having direct sum decompositions. So, I can have this type of you know k tuple alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha k where alpha will come from w i and alpha can be written like this. This is coming as a consequence of the criteria uh, already stated in theory, above theorem please. So, i equal to e 1 plus e 2 plus e k. So, from that also I can have it. Okay. So, where alpha i belongs to your w i. Then we have t of alpha is equal to t of alpha 1 plus t of alpha 2 plus t of alpha k I am even t is restricted to w i I have written this is the new operators called t 1 alpha 1 plus t 2 alpha 2 plus t k alpha k I have given the name like this. See this t i is operator on 
wi on the subspace wi place. So, in this situation we have seen if b 1, b 2, b k are order basis of w 1, w 2, w k then b equal to b 1, b 2 and b k is a an order basis of v and the matrix representation of t with respect to order basis b will of the form of something like a 1, a 2, a k where a i is a square matrix of d i cross d i order which is basically a i is the matrix representation of t i on w i and sigma of d i i equal to 1 to k is the dimension of the vector space v. So, we have seen like this. Now, question is under what condition is d w 1, w 2, w k will be t invariant. Now, question is under what condition each w i will be t invariant this one. Now, to answer this question I will basically uh, since most of the places in this course I will consider projection operator. So, instead of T 1, T 2, T k I will consider E 1, E 2, E k type. Okay. So, to answer this question I am basically considering the this problem please. So, with this problem is basically some sort of I am writing theorem let v equal to w 1 plus w k I mean v is the direct sums of w 1, w 2, w k and t is a linear operator t b a linear operator on V. Since V is direct sums of W 1, W 2, K, W K. So, let K linear operators E 1, E 2, E K be satisfied the condition E i square equal to E i that is each E i is a projection. Second E i into E j equal to 0, the 0 operator for i not equal to j. Third, the identity operators is a sum of e 1 plus e 2 plus e k range of 
E i is W i. So, let V is direct sum of W 1 to W 2 k and T be linear operator on V and uh, E 1 E 2 E k there are k linear operators which are projection operators satisfying the criteria 1 to 4. Then each W i is invariant under T if and only if T commutes with each E i that is T E i equal to E i T for i equal to 1 to k. So, if the operator T commutes with each of the projection operator E i, then the subspaces W 1 to W k will be invariant under T. So, let us give a quick proof to this problem. It is given T commutes with each E i. So, T of E i equal to E i T for i equal to 1 to k. It is given to us. Claim W i is invariant under T. Let alpha belongs to W i. Now, alpha belongs to W i. This implies that alpha is the basically range space of E i. So, alpha equal to E i alpha. If I say that alpha belongs to W i, then alpha equal to E i alpha. So, this implies T of alpha equal to T E i alpha. This is equal to T E i operating on alpha. So, this is I can write down E i t operating on alpha. Since E i t equal to T E i it is given to us. So, I can write down T alpha is equal to E i t operating on alpha. So, this is equal to E i of T of alpha. So, certainly this will belongs to W i. So, this implies this implies W i is invariant under T. Let us prove the other way that is only if this is first is if. So, now I am talking about the only if this one basically only if that is given each w i is invariant under T. Claim that T commute T commutes with each e j that is T of e j equal to e j t for j equal to 1 to k. I have to show that T of e j equal to e j t. According to given statement of the theorem we have i equal to e 1 plus e 2 plus e k. So, this implies that alpha operating on i equal to e 1 alpha plus e 2 alpha plus 
E k alpha please. So, I have alpha equal to like this. So, this implies T alpha will be equal to sigma T E i alpha i equal to 1 to k. Okay. I mean to say T alpha is equal to T e 1 alpha plus T e 2 alpha plus T e k alpha. We have T e j alpha belongs to W j since E j alpha belongs to W j and W j is invariant under T. So, this implies each T E j alpha for each T e j alpha there will be beta j in W j such that this will be equal to E j beta j for some beta j belongs to W j. We have alpha is equal to E 1 alpha plus E 2 alpha plus E k alpha. Now, T alpha will be equal to T E 1 alpha plus T E 2 alpha plus T E k alpha, which I can write down sigma T E i alpha. And when operating E j from the left side, so I have E j T alpha, E j T alpha will be equal to how much? It will be again sigma E j T E i alpha i equal to 1 to k. So, note that T e i alpha will, will be in the w i. So, according to our 1, so this is basically equal to sigma i equal to 1 to k e j and e i beta i from 1. So, this implies that E j t alpha will be equal to E j beta j. So, 1 and 2 implies that E j t alpha equal to T e j alpha. So, this implies E j t equal to T Ej. So, T commutes with each Ej. So, T commutes with each Ej. So, we have seen the criteria of under what condition each subspecies Wj will be invariant under T. Now, let us apply this concept to a very specific problems when the operator T is having diagonalization structures. I mean when T is diagonalizable, let me see what this theorem says. Whether is it possible to have a simplified structure about this projection operator E j or not. So, consider T as a diagonalizable operator on a finite dimensional vector space capital B. See, I mean in these theorems here, I have not assumed that whether the vector space has to be finite dimensional or not. So, this results what we have considered is valid for finite or infinite both the case space. Now, 
I am applying this concept when T is a diagnosable operator defined over a finite dimensional vector space V. Let C1, C2, Ck be its distinct eigenvalues and W1, W2, Wk be the corresponding Eigen spaces, Eigen spaces. Since T is diagonalizable, so Eigen vector will form a basis for this space, and so certainly I will have V will have a direct sum decompositions of by the its Eigen spaces. So V will have direct sum of W1, W2 and Wk. Okay. So, I will have V equal to like this. So, since V is the direct sum decomposition of W1, W2, Wk, our previous result says that there will be k projection operator, say E1, E2, Ek, where range of Ei is Wi. So, that concept will be there. So, there exist k linear operators E1, E2 and Ek such that such that Ei square equal to Ei, Ei is a equal to 0, third identity operator will be must be equal to E1 plus E2 plus E k range of E i is W i. Now, the concept that T is diagonalizable, let us see what way this is helping us. So, we have for any alpha belongs to V, there will be k tuple. So, that alpha is equal to alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha k where alpha i belongs to w i. I mean to say alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha k are the basically Eigen vectors associated to Eigen value c 1, c 2, c k. So, this implies and of course, we have T of alpha will be equal to how much? T of alpha 1 plus T of alpha 2 plus T of alpha k. This is equal to C 1 alpha 1 plus C 2 alpha 2 plus C k alpha k. And of course, we have seen identity operator is equal to here E 1 plus E 2 plus E k. So, then this means that alpha is equal to also we can write down E 1 alpha plus E1 alpha will be basically C1 E1 alpha. So, this implies that I see that T is having of the structure of C1 E1 plus C2 E2 plus Ck Ek. So, when T is diagonalizable, then also I am getting I am getting there T of alpha when alpha is equal to E1 alpha plus E2 alpha plus Ek alpha. So, T of alpha will be T of E1 alpha 
plus T of E2 alpha plus T of E k alpha. But T of E1 alpha is equal to C1 E1 alpha because E1 alpha is a eigen vector associated to the eigen value C1. So, similarly I will have T equal to C1 E1 plus C2 E2 plus C k E k. Okay. So, this is the new feature I am getting that the operator T can be written as C1 E1 plus C2 E2 plus C k E k please. Previously, when it is T is not diagonalizable, suppose this diagonalizable is not there, so I can only write down the identity operator as the sum of projection operator E1 to E k. But when T is diagonalizable, I mean when this uh, in that case your eigenspaces are also invariant, then I am getting what? I am getting the operator T as a sum of C1 E1 plus C2 E2 plus C k E k. Now, this information will certainly help to talk about the structure of the projection operator as a function of T. Because projection operator E E1 E2 E k, they are all belongs to your L V V. So, certainly E1, E2, E k one will be able to express as a linear combination of t to the power 0, t to the power 1, t to the power 2 and so on. I mean basis of the L V V, but for this diagonalizable operator case we can show that it this projection operator is having typical simple structures. What is that? That I am showing it here. Suppose this is T is diagonalizable, then I see that T is of these structures. So, this implies T square will be equal to how much? It will be C1 E1 plus C2 E2 plus C k E k this into C1 E1 plus C k E k. So, using the property that E i into E j equal to 0, this will give you C 1 square E 1 plus C 2 square E 2 plus C k square E k because E i square equal to E i. So, based on that principle, I can write down the operator T square equal to C 1 square E 1 plus C 2 square E 2 plus C k uh, square E k. So, in general T to the power r will be C 1 power r E 1 plus you know C k power r and E k. Okay. So, this implies that for any polynomial g x over the field f on which the vector space is defined g t will be equal to g c 1 e 1 plus g c 2 e 2 plus g c k e k. So, the operator g t which define over the vector space B, I see that having typical structure which is equal to G C 1 E 1 plus G C 2 E 2 plus like this. So, in particular when the polynomial G x equal to having Lagrangian interpolant polynomial say P x which is equal to P j x is equal to you know x minus C i i not equal to j divided by C j minus C i. I mean x minus C 1 into x minus C 2 x minus C k excluding the x minus C j and the denominator it will be C j minus this is i please C j minus C 1 C j minus C 2 
and C j minus C k if I consider like this then we have P j C i equal to delta i j Kronecker delta Kronecker delta function. So, this is equal to 1 for i equal to j 0 i not equal to j. So, if I consider this type of polynomial function then we have p j t will be equal to p j c 1 e 1 plus p j c j minus 1 plus and e j e j minus 1 plus p j c j e j plus p j c k e k. But all will be 0 x will have only simply p j c j e j which is equal to e j. So, this implies the projection operator E j for this case is basically Lagrangian interpolon I mean operator P j t where P j is a Lagrange interpolon polynomial function piece. So, this is the beauty of this result piece. So, we see that when t is diagonalizable the projection operator having structure of the form p j t and that p j is a basically Lagrange interpolant polynomial piece. We will continue with the applications of these invariant direct sums and more specifically for first I will talk about the diagonal operators because I have assumed here that uh, if t is a diagonalizable and v is having direct sum decompositions then the the operator t having a typical structure like c1 e1 plus t c2 e2 plus c k e k. But if suppose the t is operator defined over the vector space v and uh, v is also having direct sum decomposition of suppose w1 w2 w k where c1 c2 c k are k distinct constant then whether the operator t will be diagonalizable or not that has to be proved please. So, this thing I will prove in my next class please.